Hey there and welcome back to Sims Sunday. My name is Pete and by now you should know in this series we try to complete The Sims 3. And we are actually closer than ever to completing that goal. In the last episode we brought back a ghost and also had a ghost baby. And today we are finally going to complete the last remaining lifetime wish of the series. We are also once again going to do something rather drastic, and that would be moving out Alexandria and two of her children. As cruel as it sounds, Alexandria was only a means to an end, and I never had any intentions for her to join the household long term. The only thing we needed her for was to make a ghost baby, and we more than succeeded in that, but I don't really want to take care of seven sims simultaneously again. So yeah, to start off this episode, we are going to move Alexandria as well as the two children, Pamela and Piper, out of the household. <laughs> Once again, we have to select kick out here, and that will move them out and automatically place them in one of the free homes in town. And this right here is their new home apparently, doesn't look too bad. Back home, outside, both Pete and Patrick are busy in the garden harvesting, and there is actually something else I want these two to achieve today, as one more thing on my completionist checklist is not only to bring back a ghost, but to also fully return him to the living. And that can be done by using Ambrosia, because if a ghost eats that, he will no longer be a ghost, and instead will return to his normal human form. So that is something the two of them will get working on in the afternoon. For now though, they can continue harvesting. With Pauline, we are now going to purchase a few more properties, as one more goal of this playthrough that I have recently thought about is to own all available properties in Sunset Valley. Now I don't know whether or not that's actually possible, because we can only purchase houses that nobody lives in, and in the end the people in town have to live somewhere, but if it is possible we will try and do it. Afterwards we can also use the Midlife Crisis Lifetime Reward to change one more trait for Pauline, and we're going to remove Charismatic and instead replace it with Workaholic. That way Pauline can now work from home and get a small boost to her work performance meter before she leaves for work and that should hopefully be enough to guarantee her that last remaining promotion in one go today. And then up next we join Patrick in the kitchen who is now ready to prepare a serving of Ambrosia. And with that serving we will bring back Pete to the realm of the living. After all, who better to do that with than the family founder? Alright, the serving is prepared and we're ready to eat. And here comes Pete, about to leave his ghost form behind once and for all. And would you look at that, he's back. Pete completes, in the flesh, alive and well, our family founder, Patrick's father and Pauline's grandfather has finally returned. And with that, we are now once again one step closer to completion. And while we're at it, let's take one more step towards that goal, as the work shift that will hopefully get Pauline her last promotion is getting closer and closer. So I think it's time we prepare her accordingly. Working from home has already raised her work performance bar enough so that I'm sure she will get the promotion. That is of course if we can keep her mood up high and have her work hard throughout the entire shift. So first things first, let's get her some baked angel food cake to eat. Then she can take a shower which will get rid of the smell and also give her a positive moodlet. And last but not least we want to max out her fun bar and we'll do that with the sim life goggles. And here we are, fun bar maxed out, Pauline is ready for work, so let's send her off to the criminal warehouse, and if everything goes according to plan, then in a few moments we will see her promoted to Emperor of Evil. And indeed, here we are. With Pauline's shift coming to an end, she also gets the final promotion. And with that, Pauline Complete is now an Emperor of Evil. We have completed the evil branch of the criminal career. And that does not only complete the last remaining career, but also the last remaining lifetime wish. And ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would say we have pretty much completed The Sims 3. There are only a small handful of things that we haven't done yet. One of those things, for example, would be to have a purple ghost from Starvation. And like I said earlier, owning basically the entirety of Sunset Valley would be great as well, if it is possible. 
but those two things are really the only points that are still left unchecked on my completionist checklist. Everything else is pretty much completed at this point. We have done all the lifetime wishes, we have done all the careers, we have completed all collections, we have maxed out all skills including their skill achievements, we have upgraded all properties in town that are upgradable, and we have even brought back ghosts from the dead and made a ghost baby. So the big question is of course, what is left to do? Now to be honest, I have to say, after 84 episodes I would be satisfied with an end to the series. But in true completionist fashion, I want this playthrough to be as thorough as possible. So on the off chance that I might have forgotten something, please let me know in the comments if there's anything we haven't done so far. Keep in mind this is the base game only, so a lot of stuff from the expansion packs will not be in there, but maybe there are some things that I haven't even thought about yet, but that should definitely appear at least once in this series. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and in the meantime we can do a bit of building. Our home lot remains somewhat unfinished at this point, and the first thing we're taking care of here is the garden. Now that Pete can help Patrick with the harvest, we can increase things a bit further, and for that we of course need a bit more space. The small garden next to the house with the money trees will also get removed, as the money trees will now move over here in a nice pattern with the lime trees. Now it is already dark outside and Patrick is still planting new seeds, the new garden definitely a bigger project than I had first anticipated. In the meantime, Pauline already has to be back at work, but with no more promotions to go after, she can take this one a bit more relaxed. It is now way past 11pm and this right here almost resembles the final idea I have for the garden. It is now fenced in, has four gates for accessibility, and is dominated by three rows of garlic. It is not entirely finished yet, but I think you get the idea. At almost 2am in the morning then, everything is planted for now, and Patrick can finally head off to bed. A good hour later, Pauline arrives back home from a work shift, and after a quick shower, she can head back outside and mop up the puddles here. This is necessary, otherwise we cannot remove the floor tiles, and that is something I want to do because we're going to make a few changes. Alright, it took a while, but finally Pauline is done, she can now grab something to eat and we can head into build mode. Now the plan here is to first of all remove the old garden, and then we're going to drastically increase the size of our small garden pond. Up next we're going to build a bridge of sorts, so that the entire front of the house is pretty much guarded by water so to say, except for that small pathway leading across of course. We will still keep the larger part of the pond on the right side accessible though, as that one also has the death fish spawner, and maybe from time to time we'll have Patrick go fishing here again, so we won't fence things in entirely. That small bit to the left side of the entrance will also get upgraded. So far it didn't really serve a purpose, but that changes now, as we will put the statue that Pauline stole quite a few episodes ago right here. Alright, looking good so far, very streamlined, a bit fenced in maybe, but keep in mind we have an Emperor of Evil living on the lot, so too much open terrain, probably also not a good idea. Now I also decided to slightly overhaul our painting room, as we now have a nice straight waterfront right next to it, and therefore I'd like to straighten out this room a bit as well. So we will remove the diagonal sides and go completely rectangular here, with nice big windows to the front and on the side. And just imagine standing inside there looking out onto the water, and with the garden in the background that sure is a beautiful scenery. Our next morning then begins with a celebration, because today is Ghost Baby Powell's birthday. And so, instead of a ghost baby, we now have a ghost toddler. And Pete and Powell will immediately begin potty training lessons, because even a ghost has to use the toilet at some point. Afterwards, Pete can help Patrick out in the garden. With the recent size increase, this is now no longer a one-man job. Now, my goal for the next few in-game days will be to make as much money as possible. Ideally, we will at least be able to buy that last remaining property in town, which I believe costs about 300,000 simoleons, and we'll then see if anything else is available. And if it's not, then at that point I would consider the goal of owning every single property in town completed. And once we are at that point, we will also have to take care of creating another ghost, and once that is complete, I think we can actually put the series to an end. 
So all of that might already happen next week, depending largely of course on how much money we actually need. But yeah, it's not entirely unrealistic that next week we are going to see the last episode of Sims Sunday. But let's not get sentimental before we've reached the end. For today, I think we have reached a good point to make the cut here. As always, if you like this episode, leave a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, then feel free to subscribe. And of course, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!